Hello and welcome into another episode of Locked On Wolves. Today on the show, some misconceptions about the Timberwolves. Still in the midst of this ridiculously difficult schedule stretch, I'll talk about why the sky is not falling. There's, you know, a, a few a few concerns that I don't think are valid concerns about this team, rotation related, shooting related. I want to talk about some of those, you know, that, that noise plus just how tough this schedule has been over the last month. I also want to preview the wolves magic game here Tuesday night. The first time we've seen Orlando this year, it's all come and welcome in. You are locked on wolves. You are locked on Timberwolves. Your daily Minnesota Timberwolves podcast. Part of the locked on podcast network. Your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Lockdown Wolves podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Ben Beacon. I'm the host of Lockdown Wolves. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Happy Timberwolves game day. The Wolves are in Orlando to take on the Magic here Tuesday night. We'll preview that game here in a little bit. Lots to get to first, though. I want to, uh, I guess, set up and knock down some straw men if you will. Not complete straw men. I'm going to dive into some of the, the the Twitter or the X comments. It's dangerous territory. I'm going to do it. I want to dispel some what I've seen as, as some uh, negative notions about this Wolves team that obviously every team has its warts, right? But uh, it's not time to panic about this Wolves team. Um, want to talk about a couple interesting stats. Also the schedule here recently, just how nuts it's been for the last month. So we'll do all that here today before we get to the magic preview. First of all, a big thank you for making Lockdown Wolves your first listen every day. Of course, this show is free and available everywhere, including YouTube, as well as all of your favorite audio platforms. You can also watch the show on the Lockdown Sports Minnesota app on both Roku and Amazon Fire TV. And you can follow on X at Lockdown T Wolves and also at B Beacon. That's with two B's, two E's, C K E N. All right. Um, I alluded to this a bit on Monday's show, which was the post game pod following the Sunday night loss to Dallas. And I don't do this very often. I, I don't, you know, social media comments, Twitter, like it's, there's a lot of noise out there. Right. Um, but as happens when a team goes five and five in the last 10, after being the best team in the league for the vast majority of the season, there, I think has been some, um, I don't know, over the top hand wringing over some aspects of this team. And so I want to pick out a couple of things I saw and kind of dispel some, some notions that I, I think are incorrect about this Wolves team. Um, I want to start by saying, like starting more broadly, um, related to this whole like, oh, they're five and five in their last 10. They've lost three out of four. Like, what are we going to do? Here's the thing. The Timberwolves right now have a, a winning percentage of 714. 714, okay? Last season, there wasn't a single team in the league that finished the season with that good of a winning percentage. The best was Milwaukee's 58 wins, which was a 707 win percentage. The best winning percentage in the Western Conference last year was 646 from the one seed Denver Nuggets, who, of course, went on to win the title. The Wolves are winning at a 714 clip. So that's like a 59 win pace. They're still basically winning at a 60 for the course of the season, obviously, at a 60 win pace. In other words, another way to look at this would be they've got a little bit of margin for error. And if you look at the body of work for a season, if this team ends up losing, again, they're on pace to only lose 23 games, 22, 23 games. If they lose, say that that's the case, and they will say they lose 25 games, they will call it uh, 59 and 25, and, uh, you know, uh, but which is basically the pace they're on, right? Well, they had to lose 25 games somewhere. And of course, they're going to be bunched together a little bit. They've still they lost two in a row once this season, which is nuts. Um, go back and look at any of these teams. Like, look at Denver last year, and I guarantee you they had a couple of a losing streaks. That's how this thing works. Uh, here we go. They lost three in a row in December last year to Atlanta, New Orleans, and Dallas. They had uh, a four-game losing streak last March. Remember when the sky seemed to be falling for the Nuggets last March? They lost five out of six. They lost to the Spurs. They lost to the Nets, uh, who I guess were a playoff team. 
Um, they lost to the Bulls last year. They scored just 96 points against the Bulls and, and you know, everything. And then that was in early March, late March last year. Denver lost five out of six again. They lost to the Rockets at the Rockets last year. They lost at the Jazz, the second to last regular season game. My point is this, and obviously you could do this with any one seed in any season except for the Warriors and the Bulls teams that were historically amazing. Teams lose games. That's how this works. You're going to lose 25 games, and that's a really good season. It would have been the best season in the league last year. It doesn't mean that the sky is falling. Go back two years, and there was, I believe, one team. Yeah, the, the Phoenix Suns won 64 games two years ago. Nobody else had a winning percentage above 683. The Wolves are winning at a 714 clip so far this season. Go back three seasons. Only one team, that was a shortened season. Only one team had a winning percentage above that. It was the Utah Jazz who went 52 and 20. Rudy Gobert's Utah Jazz, uh, Rudy Gobert's Utah Jazz. Mike Conley's Utah Jazz in a 72 game season, won 52 games, won at a 722 clip. Again, the Wolves are winning at a 714 clip. Go back four years, only one team. Again, a shortened season. That was the first COVID shortened season. The Lakers won at a 732 clip and they won the title that year. Go back five years, only one team. So if you go back the last five years, last year, not a single team finished with a winning percentage that good. Go back five years, only one team in every other season the last five years has finished with a winning percentage better than what the Wolves are at right now a third of the way through the season. And I don't say, I don't say all of that to suggest the Wolves will finish with the league's best record, although it's certainly possible. I say that to provide some context to the sky is falling narrative of, hey, Oh no, the Wolves are five and five in their last 10. Well, guess what? They played some really, really good teams. And I want to, I guess we can start talking about that now. I also want to get into a couple of, of, of those additional social comments, but let's do the schedule thing first. Uh, the Timberwolves have played six, when, when it's all said and done, they play Orlando Tuesday night, they play at Boston Wednesday night, which is an impossible back-to-back. -back. Take the whole thing, going back to, December 11th against the New Orleans Pelicans. So it'll be, you know, a month will be this, this, um, what's today? The ninth. So it'll be Thursday. will be the, will be one month. So in one month, in the span of exactly a month, they'll played 16 consecutive games against teams that currently are in the top, uh, that are playoff teams in the top 10. And I think all of them, but maybe one or two are in the top eight in their conference. So 16 consecutive teams that are above 500. Okay. 11 of the 16 have been on the road. And the Timberwolves have only had one two-game homestand in the last month. They have never played more than two consecutive games at home in the last month. And only one time did they play two straight home games. 11 of 16 on the road. Through 14, through 14, they're eight and six. Now, I think I think the it's very likely they win in, I should say very likely. I think it's likely they beat Orlando and likely they lose to Boston. So if they finish this stretch nine and seven, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. There's been two back-to-backs, if you include this Orlando-Boston one, and I'm assuming they'll split that one. So they'll have two back-to-backs, 11 of 16 on the road, only a single two-game homestand. Otherwise, they're all one-off home games with road trips in between. And they're 8-6 and six through 14 games. Okay? I want to take this a step further. I want to look at some numbers from cleaning the glass in terms of how the Wolves, beyond the record of 8-6, and six, how the Wolves actually performed, if we take that specific date, the Pelicans game on December 11th, and we play it forward here over the last 14 games, yes, they're eight and six, but how is the offense fared? How is the defense fared? And then I want to get into a couple of comments that I saw related to uh, specifically Jaden McDaniels, the, the team, you know, uh, the rotation and the guys in the rotation, making open shots, et cetera. Some of those numbers, how well have the Wolves actually shot wide open jumpers this year? It might surprise you because the answer is not too poorly. Right, they've been pretty good there. I want to talk about Jaden McDaniels a little bit? People are getting on his case after a one for ten shooting night uh, against Dallas Sunday, rightfully so. But again, that's one game. It's not the season, right? One game does not a season make. Um, so I, I want to get to all that here next, and then we'll do the the magic preview here to close the show today. Today's episode of Lockdown Wolves is brought to us by our friends over at BetterHelp. Today's show is sponsored by. Better help. 
What are some things that you want to keep the same about yourself or about your life in 2024? Where are you already crushing it at this point? And, and, and really think the opposite of new year, new you. Around New Year's, we can all get obsessed with how to change ourselves instead of just expanding on what we might already be doing right. Maybe you finally organize one part of your space. You want to tackle another. That's something I'm always struggling with. Maybe you're trying to take supplements every morning and, and be healthy here at the start of the new year. And, and now you want to actually eat breakfast too, to take it to the next step. Therapy can help you find your strengths. So you can ditch the extreme resolutions, which again is something I struggle with is taking it, trying to take it too far, trying to take one giant step instead of smaller steps. Um, instead therapy can help you make changes that really stick. If you're thinking of starting therapy, consider giving BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, and it's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. You can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Celebrate the progress that you've already made. Visit BetterHelp.com slash NBA today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash NBA. Lockdown has launched the first ever national sports 24 seven streaming channel on YouTube. Lockdown sports today is here for you 24 seven covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of lockdown. Plus our national shows covering every league, go to lockdown sports today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24 seven streaming channel. All right. Um, so I, I mentioned the schedule, of course, uh, eight and six in the last 14. If you if you take this a step further and you look at the cleaning the glass numbers, cleaningtheglass.com, you can put in uh, you know, whatever arbitrary start and end point you want. And they, of course, they have a default kind of last two weeks, like how's the team doing the last two weeks? But you can also put an actual start date. So I put in December 11th, which was when the Wolves took on the Pelicans. They're eight and four, as I mentioned, over that stretch. Excuse me, eight and six in 14 games over that stretch. But it also has their offensive and defensive rating over that stretch. And again, the cleaning the glass numbers remove garbage time. And they also take out the end of quarter possessions that are, uh, you know, rebounded and throw up a heave from three quarters court. So they're a little bit more accurate. And since December 11th, since that start of this just hellacious stretch that the Wolves have have been on schedule wise, Minnesota still has the league's third defense third rated defense over the last 30 days. Well, 28 days since December 11th. Number three in defense, despite exclusively playing above 500 teams, exclusively playing playoff teams, they're still the third rated defense during the last month. They've held two teams under 100, one of them just being Houston last Friday night, the other being Sacramento. A, a, it was a full-strength Sacramento team. Uh, a couple days before Christmas on December 23rd, they held them to 98 points. They also held Dallas to 101. Now that was a uh, that was that was the Dallas game that that Luca played in, but there was no Kyrie back in Dallas on December 14th, the second game of the stretch. So they held three teams under 101 points during this stretch, and of course also gave up that crazy you know the 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 beatdown in Philadelphia, the beatdown in Oklahoma City. And yet, over this stretch, December 11th until right now, in 14 games, Minnesota has the third-rated defense. And overall, for the season, of course, they're still the number one-rated defense league-wide sitting here right now, which is impressive considering you know the, this, this uh, quote-unquote swoon that they've been on here recently. The offense is not good. It's been 20th over that stretch. But for the season, Depending on where you look, it's it's right around you know twenty to twenty second anyway. So the offense hasn't necessarily been worse; it's just been the same. Of course, that's concerning that it hasn't gotten better, but it's not bottom five. It's not worse than it was at the start of the season. So again, it doesn't fit the sky is falling narrative. The team is twelfth in point differential over that period of time. They are seventeenth um, in spread differential. What that means is the average point differential relative to the spread, uh, which again goes to show how difficult the schedule has been. Um, so across the board, the wolves have been basically what you might have expected over the last couple of weeks. And again, any team, virtually any team in the league, I, no, I do think any team, if you told them you're playing fourteen games against only playoff teams, 
you know, how do you want to come out of this thing realistically? Most coaches would say, you know, if we win more than we lose, that's a pretty good stretch. That's how this whole thing works. Again, going back to my first point on the show, like you're always going to play X number of games against the league's worst team because everybody plays everybody, right? Which means you're always going to play X number of games against the league's best teams. You're going to lose a couple of the bad teams. You're hopefully going to beat some of the, you know, more. And remember last year, the Wolves were weirdly good against the league's best teams and weirdly bad against the league's worst teams. And this year, They've been as expected. They've been good against the good teams, above 500 against the good teams, and they've crushed the bad teams. And that equals the best record in the Western Conference. There's nothing to be like wringing our hands about over, you know, the, the body of work over the past month. Individual things here and there, right? Like, obviously, there's been some games that were real stinkers. The Knicks game had some disappointing moments. The Pelicans loss had some disappointing moments. Uh, the Thunder game was just overall disappointing. The Philly game was a weird one. The New Orleans game was a weird one. Like, going back, there's only, like, I would say the Knicks and Pelicans games were the most frustrating and concerning. Well, and I guess the Thunder game. But again, the Thunder are really good. Tough road game, day after Christmas, whatever. Like, those are the three, right? The Thunder, the Knicks, the Pelicans. Give me the other 11. All right. They lost at Philly and bead went off. They lost at new Orleans. Zion went off. They lost at Dallas. Luca and Kyrie went off for Dallas. Ant was the only superstar that came to the party for Minnesota. We talked about that on the show yesterday, three stinkers out of 14 against the best competition that you're going to find is not the end of the world. Okay. A couple of quick social comments. I want to expand on, um, John Krasinski posted a, uh, I think he, he retweeted actually, or, I don't know. How do you, how do you say quote tweet now? He reposted and quote, quote posted. I don't know. Quote reposted, uh, the voice of the Tim rules on the radio, Alan Horton, of course, uh, you know, uh, he can be heard on, on the XSM app, XSM app, Sirius XM. You can check out him. And he actually used to host this show back several years ago. Um, Alan did not John. Anyway, John commented in, in about the wolf streak of winning games when leading in the fourth quarter. And there were a couple of, I'll call them interesting comments. One of them actually is, is I basically just address this from somebody who has a very generic user name and handle on Twitter. Uh, they said five and five in the last 10, no signs of much, if any improvement at all. We're not playing like a top 10 in the league right now. Brutal after having such a great start to the season, but it's starting to feel like a fluke. I feel like I've already explained why that's not correct. Um, and then there's a comment from someone that says McDaniels shouldn't be starting. He brings nothing to the offense and his defense is not as good as people think. I'd love to see him traded for another guard or small forward that can shoot related related. There was another comment. I lost it now about somebody talking about the wolves needed to knock down open shots to be clear. That was an issue in Dallas. And I addressed that on Monday's show. A big part of the wolves losing that game was simply just Jaden missed that open three pointer in the corner cat missed call it one and a half open threes. You know, they're both lightly contested, but open enough for Kat to make them off those uh, play calls from Finch. The Wolves missed some open shots on the stretch. Yes. For the season, though, that hasn't necessarily been an issue. So I'll address that first. Of course, on NBA.com, you can search uh, teams and how they shoot against, you know, different types of coverages in terms of closest defenders. So against wide in wide open three point attempts, which is defenders six or more feet away, the closest defender being six or, four, or more feet away. The Wolves are actually um, seventh, or actually tied for sixth in the NBA in terms of three-point percentage when they're wide open, 40.5%. In terms of attempts, they're pretty middle of the pack regarding how often they get those, um, they get wide open threes. Well, actually, three-point, wide open three-point field goal frequency, they're actually slightly, they're barely in the top 10. But again, they're shooting over 40%, 40.5% tied for uh, fifth in the league or tied for sixth in the league in terms of three-point percentage when they're wide open. So for the season, that hasn't been an issue. And remember, we're talking about a Wolves team that, uh, you know, volume-wise doesn't shoot enough threes. Right now, going into the game against Orlando, they're 19th in terms of three-point attempt rate, but they're still fifth in percentage. So they're making their threes by and large. They just didn't in this particular game. And turns out when the superstars on the other side make contested shots, you're not likely to win if you miss the open ones. In the course of an 82 game season, that happens. The other one was Jaden McDaniels. Obviously, he went one for 10 against Dallas. And I think it was 0 of 5 outside the arc. He's down to 35% on threes for the season, 35.1%. Uh, now, coming into the game, he's 
turns out you're still only 30 some games into the year. You go for five. That's going to tank your percentage by a few, a few points. But last year was 39.8%. He was a 40% three point shooter. Last year was over 40% catch and shoot for his career coming into the season. He was 36%. And, and two years ago, he had a, a subpar year, but was over 36%, which back in McDaniel's rookie year, that was about league average. So he's been league average or better. Uh, you know, two of his first three years in the league last year was 40%, over 40% catch and shoot. And this year was 38%. So he went over five the other day. So, uh, you know, suggesting that Jaden McDaniels is overrated defensively and a poor shooter is not correct. Um, and again, I say this as an example of this is what happens when you have a good team that has a small speed bump. There's no catastrophic issues here other than uh, the fact that they're still in, they're still experiencing this slight bump in the road, right? As we've talked about before, though, you know, they're they're not likely to win both games at Orlando at Boston. That's just how, again, how the NBA works. But then you get Portland. A couple games after that, you get Detroit. Unfortunately, John Morant is out for the season now with the torn labrum that was announced on Monday. And, and obviously, I'd rather John be on the court and it would have been more fun to face John Morant. He's not playing when the Wolves take on Memphis on a back-to-back -back national TV, the first TNT game next week. So after these two games, three of the next four are Portland, Detroit, and Memphis before you get Oklahoma City. But then you get Charlotte, Washington, Brooklyn, San Antonio. Four straight games they'll be favored in. This Wolves team is going to get right. And yes, it will have to do with the schedule. But there's not a whole lot wrong with eight and six against 14 playoff teams either. And I guess that's my point here with this whole mini rant that I've been on. Um, I want to talk about the Magic matchup. The Wolves have not faced Orlando yet this year. So that's what we'll do next here to close out the show. Today's episode of Lockdown Wolves is brought to us by our friends over at FanDuel. The NFL regular season is wrapping up. In fact, it did just wrap up. But the playoffs are starting this weekend. And uh, there's, I think, two games Saturday, three games Sunday, and one Monday night. So tons of NFL playoff action to check out. There's plenty of time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And playoff football, this is the second best weekend of football of the year. Um the following weekend, actually, the weekend after this upcoming one, divisional weekend is the best because you get two Saturday, two Sunday. It's the best football of the year. Um, but this is the second best weekend of football. Six games over three days. And it's it should mostly be high-level football. Right now, new customers at Fane will get 150 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's 150 bucks in bonus bets. Win or lose. The app is so easy to use, and there are so many different ways to bet. Like same live live same-game parlays, you can find bets in the new Explore tab. You can make a parlay in the Parlay Hub. It's the best way to find popular parlays and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, let's close this thing out with the magic matchup for the Wolves. The Wolves have not faced Orlando yet this season. And uh, Orlando has been, I think, surprising to me. I didn't think they would be a, a top, you know, currently they're actually tied for fourth in the East with identical records to Miami and Indiana. Actually, you know what? They're tied with four other teams for fourth place in the East, Miami, Orlando, Indiana, Cleveland, and the Knicks all have the exact same 21 and 15 record. And of all those, um, they're all actually pretty similar point differentials as well. The Knicks have the best one followed by the Pacers and then the magic. Um, so anyway, I wouldn't have expected the, Magic to be in the top six in the East, no matter how you slice it. And I suppose if they lose and some of these other teams win, they'll be all the way down to ninth. But anyway, they've been good. They've dealt with a lot of injuries here lately. They've got guys that are out. Um, uh, Franz Wagner is going to miss the game against the Wolves, which is huge. He's one of their best couple of players, uh, you know, probably top two players, I would say. Um, they did beat the Hawks in overtime the other day. They beat the Nuggets uh, a couple games ago. They lost to the Kings in double overtime. But if you look at their schedule, they haven't lost to very many bad teams at all this year. Like look at their 15 losses. Sacramento, Golden State, Phoenix. Obviously, neither Golden State or Phoenix is as good as as people expected, but still. Uh they lost to Philadelphia recently. They they had a four-game losing streak, but it was Boston, Boston, Miami, Milwaukee. Cleveland and, you know, Brooklyn, I guess the 20 plus point loss to Brooklyn going back 6 weeks now wasn't great. Uh but you got to go all the way back to early November, late December, you know, when they lost to like Atlanta, but like it looks like 11 of their 15 losses were against above 500 teams against playoff teams. 
And they had a crazy winning streak in there that was nine games. And most of that was against bad teams, although they beat Denver and Boston in there too. Um, so they've already beaten Denver, by the way. They've swept the season series with Denver. I don't love the matchup for the Wolves against the Magic uh, for a couple of reasons. One, obviously they play good teams tough um, across the board. They, they pretty much do. Um, and I mean, there's a couple other things they do well that the Wolves don't. They're a good rebounding team. They're 13th right now in offensive rebound rate. And the Wolves, of course, even though the defensive rebound rate is okay, um, it, this is another example. You take cleaning the glasses number, and it doesn't look as good because cleaning the glass takes out garbage time. The Wolves still struggle with good offensive rebounding teams. Also, Orlando is second in defensive rebound rate. The Wolves don't usually rely a ton on second chance points, um, but they... They uh, they needed to against Dallas. They tried to, and they got a ton of offensive rebounds against a diminutive Dallas lineup that was a bit shorthanded. Uh, but for the season, the Wolves are 18th in offensive rebound rate. Orlando is second in defensive rebound rate. They're just a good rebounding team on both sides of the floor, and that's just not a, an ideal matchup for Minnesota. The biggest issue, though, is Orlando is fantastic at getting to the free throw line. So far this season, they are uh, third in the league. No, I'm sorry. They're first in the league in free throw rate. Almost, they attempt almost, almost a, uh, they nearly attempt a free throw attempt for every three field goal attempts that they make or that they shoot, not make. Okay. So their free throw rate is point is basically 0. 0.31. So if it were 0. 0.33, another way of saying that would be for every three shots that they attempt from the field, they shoot one free throw, which is nuts. They're number one in the league in free throw rate. Now, Wagner being out certainly helps in that regard, but Paulo Bancaro is fantastic at getting to the line. And uh, the Wolves are going to have to deal with him. Um, he's obviously their most dynamic player, uh, especially with Wagner out. You're mostly worried about him. They've got some other rotation guys that aren't going to play. Jonathan Isaac, I, I don't believe, is going to play in this game. He's been out for a little while. Joe Ingles has been out. Gary Harris has been out. These guys are all rotation, mostly non-starters. Uh, Wagner being out is a big deal. I would argue he's probably their best all-around player. Uh, but Bancaro, of course, is very dynamic and a unique player to have to deal with. Um, averaging 23, seven and five this year and shooting the ball better from deep. So, um, he worries me a little bit. He shoots seven and a half free throw attempts per game. And the wolves have been very foul happy here recently. They actually did okay against Dallas, especially given that it was Luca. I think Luca only attempted six or seven free throws. Kyrie only attempted a couple, uh, but the wolves need to do their best to not follow in this game. The matchup is just a, a bit dicey. Um, also, Minneapolis or Minnesota native Jalen Suggs has been playing much better here. He's shooting 40% from outside the arc, has improved greatly as a shooter. He's always been a good defender. Um, he's a big part of what they're doing, too. He's a uh, he's a starter for them. So he likely will have the, the ants assignment. Um, and again, no Wagner. So like this is a certainly a winnable game for Minnesota. And I think it's more likely they win in Orlando than they, you know, than that they win in Boston the next night. Um, but because they play Boston the next night, I think the wolves and right now the wolves don't have anyone on their injury report. They should sell out to try and get this win because winning in Boston is going to be tough regardless, especially, you know, no, um, oh, I didn't even mention when called Wendell Carter jr. Is not going to play either. So no Wagner, no Isaac, no Ingles, no Harris, no Wendell Carter jr. The wolves are, and I'm going to throw this graphic up here on, uh, on YouTube. The wolves are minus five is the spread for this game. Five point favorites, a low over under of two eighteen. The Magic actually have a similar overall team profile to the Wolves in that they're the fourth team in defense, fourth in defensive rating. They're 22nd in offensive rating. So a top five, I mean, stop me if you've heard this before, a top five defense, a bottom 10 offense. That's exactly what the Wolves are right now too. Um, so in that regard, it's similar to Minnesota, but I worry about this matchup as a whole. If the Wolves can do okay on the glass, you know, hold the own. They don't have to dominate the glass, hold the own. Don't give up too many second chance opportunities and don't put Ben Carroll on the line, you know, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12 times. And they should be okay. Again, five point favorites. You got to win before you go on the road to Boston. Uh, we'll have the live postcast over at locked on sports, Minnesota after the game on YouTube. And then that audio will be posted here to this feed locked on wolves. Wednesday, we'll have the Minnesota basketball party. Myself, uh, Jack Borman, the editor in chief of Canis Hoopis. We'll have uh, Reggie Wilson, the lead sports anchor at care 11. And we'll have Ron Johnson for the Ron Johnson show. We'll all be on with Sam Ekstrom on Wednesday. And then, of course, my show Wednesday as well, which will be the post-game pod. That will actually post first before the party 
uh, episode, uh, you know, recapping the the Tuesday night Wolves Magic game. We'll get you ready for Wolves Celtics Wednesday night too. Um, and hopefully the Wolves can finish this thing with at least a split. Maybe they'll steal a couple on the road as they exit this gauntlet and get into a, a bit of a softer part of the schedule, get back home to face Portland on Friday night. All right, that's all we have for you today here on the show. A big thank you for making Locked on Wolves your first listen every day. Of course, this show is free and available everywhere, including YouTube, as well as all of your favorite audio platforms. Wherever you like to listen to podcasts, you can find Locked on Wolves. You can also watch on the Locked on Sports Minnesota app on both Roku and Amazon Fire TV. You can also follow an X at Locked on T-Wolves and also at B Beacon with two Bs, two Es, CK, E-N. Of course, the Lockdown Wolves podcast is part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. Remember, the Lockdown Network is your local experts on all the biggest stories. Once again, I'm Ben Beacon. This is the Lockdown Wolves podcast, and we'll catch you next time.